Hello, welcome back to the Spider's Web, and in this video we're going to be painting these ruined buildings from TT Combat. These are buildings that are in 15mm scale, and they are ideal for Flames of War. This is part of the ruined towns, townhouses set. There is also a townhouses set, I've got both sets, and I will be painting, I'll be showing you how I've painted examples of these models. Um, over the course of the next few videos. Um, now, don't be too... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't be too caught up in the paints that I'm using. It's not important. Um, the paints I'm using are my choice just because I happen to have them to hand and I just pick them up and put them in. Um, if you do, if you decide you're going to get these mini, uh, these buildings, and uh, you want to paint them, paint them whatever colour you wish. That's all I'm saying. There's no right, as far as I know, there's no right or wrong for these. I'm painting this the colour that I want to paint it. So I'm just showing the paints that I'm using, but seriously, it's immaterial. Um, the important part is that the building gets covered in paint. <laughs> I have primed this in a, in a grey. It's the usual grey that I use. It's from uh, an automotive shop called Halfords. It's um, what you call it. It's just it's just a acrylic grey primer. They do two primers in Halfords. One's an acrylic primer, which is the one I use. I don't know what the other is. I don't care because I don't use it. <laughs> so that's basically what I've done and with using the airbrush it, the details and the recesses in the uh, in the designs of these really do stand out when you use an airbrush um, you have a chance with these of going over them too heavy handed if you use a paintbrush which is the reason that you decided to use the airbrush it's a lot more subtle. So as you can see, I'm just using shades of green for this particular building. I like green. The only reason. <laughs> if you want to paint them green, paint them green. If you want to paint them blue with orange dots, paint them blue with orange dots. It's not important. As long as they look okay for you on your battlefield, that's all that matters. Um, I've said repeatedly about uh, Flames of War, I'm not actually going into the game um, as an historic, historically accurate representation of uh, World War II. I'm going into Flames of War as a game. So it doesn't matter to me uh, whether anything looks right or not. The painted they're ready for off and I'm hoping to get to enjoy this particular game um, although saying that the things I've been looking at with the minis that are available um, just to find out what they actually are I have been going online and uh, reading about them but uh, that's just me I'm getting a little more interested in it <laughs> but as I say, it's not an accurate historical reproduction. It's a game. So, I did say I primed these in a grey. I've also dusted the apex of the roof in a white, just to make it a little brighter. Um, now, the one thing I have done with all of these buildings is paint the roofs in this dark blue-grey. Or dark grey-blue, I think it's called. Um, so all the buildings are done in this colour and I think the exterior walls of the building are done in a very similar colour um, slight differences in tone but much of a muchness with how they look so um, I want them to look as though they're in the same town built with the same kind of stone or you know it's like a stucco effect kind of thing um, they've all been done the same way to make them all blend in and fit in together um, 
I mean, I, I didn't want them to make them look like Tobermory in Scotland, which was the village that was used for the TV series Balamory with the pink and all different coloured buildings. It's not that kind of era and location. Um, this is France in World War II. It's not a pretty little highland village in Scotland. Um, another thing I've done all the way through is painted the wooden parts, which I'm doing here in mahogany. Um, yes, okay, these are floorboards for these um, upstairs, well, for the uh, top floor of the houses, and they were probably be done out of oak rather than mahogany, but I didn't have a paint colour called oak, but I did have one called mahogany, so... Yeah, I just grabbed it and sprayed it. <laughs> um, right, with this set, uh, you get these two particular. Uh, you get two houses of this particular design. Um, you also get four even more ruined houses, and you'll see what they were like in another video because I I have done. Uh, those ones as well and I've painted them near enough the exact well, near enough the same style um, but uh, what I'm doing here I think is just doing the floor for the upper story um, now obviously they would have some form of patterned carpet and I couldn't be bothered doing anything like that so I just sprayed it this color yeah and as you can see from that patch of um, broken flooring where the wood is showing through, as I caught it with the overspray from the that pale creamy grey, uh, creamy green colour, the wood panel look still showed up. So I've decided to paint all of the exterior houses, as I said earlier, this particular similar shade to this like a creamy yellowy greeny color um, I just wanted it to show like it's been uh, had some form of rendering on the outside which is you know discolored with age um, but you'll also see with these particular buildings that they're not going to stay this way um, I have seen photographs of World War II buildings that, yeah, okay, they've fallen down. These ones, I want them to look as though they've been bombed or shelled and have burned down. So you'll see what I'm going to do in a moment. And in a second as well, I'll realise that I've actually forgotten to paint one of the walls when I change the colour. And going to, to, to do the red brick. Now I'm having a little trouble with the airbrush here. I think I've got a little bit of a clog. So um, I'm just going to get the tub in a moment and put some of the airbrush cleaner in and just spray a little bit of a fine spray in it just to see if I can clear it. And it seems to work. But at the moment it just seems to be um, working when I release the pressure it comes out so let's say a drop of airbrush cleaner um, just have a, a little bit of a squirt in of it and then take the um, nozzle covers off and have a and just rinse them through give them a dry and it seems to work and um, to get me back on uh, on track with painting so that's what I've been doing. I also just touch the nozzle. Don't press it. Don't put it in and press it on the on the base of the uh, tub. Just dip it into the liquid. Make sure the needle doesn't touch anything because that's the way you bend the tip. And you ain't going to do much if you bend the tip of a airbrush needle. So I've heard. <clears throat> so there we go. And that's that wall finished. 
and now I'm just giving the uh, brush a clean out to change to do the brickwork which is a mix of mahogany and red to give that right, nice red brick effect I'm not too keen on the grey brick effect I, I prefer the red brick so that's what I'm doing but I do realise when I'm doing this brick work that I have forgotten to paint a wall and the wall I'm painting is the one that is actually in the top middle of the screen facing to the right as you look at it um, but once I've done the brickwork I come back to it and it's, it gets done don't worry you know it's it's one of those habits that I have of forgetting something when I'm a, when I'm painting anything whatsoever <laughs> You always see me do it. I'm, even with a brick paintbrush, I will forget to paint something. That's just me. <laughs> um, now, one thing I do want to mention is that when it comes down to doing the um, uh, infantry, I don't think I'm going to be painting those on camera because I'm going to find it a little awkward. Um, my eyesight's not brilliant. I do have use reading glasses, but even with just my reading glasses, um, I find it difficult to see the detail and um, the head loop I've got the elastic is becoming very very loose and it's ended up covering you know just falling falling it's so loose it's actually falling down my forehead and knocking my glasses off so I do have um, a big magnifying lens on um, like a, an arm like a microphone arm um, and I'll be using that and that makes it so much easier to paint them so I may not I probably won't paint as I say I probably won't paint the infantry but I I'll show you what I've done with them you know I, I do I, I think I have painted some infantry minis um, and I will show you those videos when I come round to it I do have a few lined up to actually overdub and up, um, upload so uh, it's just getting the time <laughs> it's getting the time the level of quiet in the flat in order to be able to uh, record them adequately without any background noise so we're going back to mixing the um, colour for the walls the outside walls because as I said I forgot one so we just have to make sure that all the walls are covered in the colour we want them and when this is done what I'm going to do is <clears throat> show you why I'm not really bothered about getting a very good coverage with these particular paints I want these buildings as I've said to look as though they've been burned so we're going to go over with black so we're getting quite a bit of black into the airbrush and we're going all around the windows the door, or the windows, the edges of the walls, or the bro broken edges of the walls, um, along that part of the roof, around the holes, and everything. And I've done it quite light on these particular, on this particular one anyway. Um, but in the more um, broken down houses. I've done it quite a bit heavier as you will see in upcoming videos but I'm just blasting through the windows making them look black and burned um, as well as parts of the walls carpets I just want to make sure everything looks as though it's been well through the wall basically well in the walls basically which it has so I want them to look burned so obviously the best way to do that is by painting things black so any areas that I think you might see 
I will be getting splatters of this black paint all over them and now I'm putting the um, houses well, I'm putting the building together I'm not gluing it at the moment I'm just making sure it's sitting together because I want to uh, make sure that as I'm doing certain parts that they match um, <clears throat> the one thing I don't particularly want to do is you know paint one part you know paint them when they're separate and they, when you put them together they don't match up so doing edges like that is the best way of doing it and now I want a little bit of contrast as well on the outside wall so I'm doing a lighter colour for the creamy colour and the edges of the walls because as I said I want that brighter contrast and to make it look a little more not cheerful but a little more easy to see when it's on the table so it's just going to get a light dusting of edge around the edges and in certain other areas but there we are I'm happy with that now so the only thing that remains to do is give the whole of the walls the external walls a wash with uh, mid brown from Ermi Painter now for some strange reason this wasn't going on like a wash um, I don't know what's going on but it's going on it's just like a very watery paint um, but it's adding a nice effect to the a nice aged effect to the uh, wall so I'm happy but that's all we have for this video I hope you've enjoyed it join us next time for more Flames of War until then though stay safe and take care God bless and bye for now <laughs>